Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. It's been a crazy Wednesday around here. Super busy, super exciting. But now I calm down and I get to come play with you, which makes me pretty happy. I have a new cup, you'll notice. It's a different one. It was a gift from one of our students that's in class right now, today. We've got a big group joining us, not in the studio, because there's too many, so they don't fit to be safely separated. We're doing all of our COVID protocols still with everybody way far apart. So they're on the other side of the wall, continuing on with class with teacher Michelle. So you may hear them in the background, but um, they know we're on camera, so they're gonna try to be a little bit quiet. In the studio with me, we have Parker. He's running tech and monitoring YouTube. Are you on YouTube today? Okay, so you're with Susie, because I know Susie's on YouTube. So we've got Susie and Parker on YouTube, and then he's also keeping us on camera, so that's important. And then teacher Marisa is here. You're on Facebook with Caledonia. So we've got Caledonia and Marisa on Facebook, Parker and Susie on YouTube, Michelle and Stu in the classroom and then in our virtual world we have teacher Carolyn I think she's probably on both YouTube and Facebook and we have David who's probably on both YouTube and Facebook and me Leanne on YouTube and Facebook and you joining us from wherever you are take a moment introduce yourself add your tulip let people know you're part of the tulip people and where you're from so that you can all get to know each other. I had a wonderful little note that I saw on the Facebook group for the Tulips that um, Jim is in Albuquerque and actually had the opportunity to get together with Amanda. They didn't know each other prior, but they had met on our lives. And now I think they're probably both with us live in Albuquerque. This is the greatest thing about these collaborations is you get to meet each other and get to know each other. So, you know, housekeeping, if you're on your phone, turn it sideways, it'll be bigger. If the comments are in the way, give it a swipe, it'll make them hide. If you're on your computer, go full screen. If you're watching us at work where you're not supposed to be watching, so it's down and you're just in your earbuds, I'll try to say, hey, look at this when it's done so you can flip your phone over and take a look at it without getting caught. So I know everybody watches in different places. Today, it's a very Perry day and should be a ton of fun. The Pantone color of the year was announced mid-December and we've already come out with a couple videos on that that you've probably seen. But I wanted to talk about what is the color of the year and what is very Perry and what does that all mean? The flowers, don't you love it? We have so many great things. They are all from floribundance.com and you can go on their site and look at what they have. You can sort it by color so you can find your own Berry Perry collection. But look at this delphinium. Isn't that a perfect Berry Perry? People say, what is Berry Perry? It's kind of a periwinkle color and that is just grand. But then, because flowers, you take a spectrum, and so it kind of evolves. The Veronica is very peri, but then this Veronica, which is a little more grape, aren't they beautiful together? So you can add you know, tints, tones, shades of that color, so that you get some variation. These just made me smile. Forget-me-nots in very Perry. I mean, that's just the greatest. And they're holding up really surprisingly well. Sometimes forget-me-nots fade too quickly. These are sturdy. Um, they're very firm. I think they're gonna last great. Some mascari, and there's a few more surprises, and scabiosa, and then some plumosa. I think you can see that over here. But uh, we're going to be designing very Perry. You know, it's interesting because there's lots of different color of the year announcements, and so there's a bit of confusion that goes with that. And you may have kind of wondered, what in the wet world? I mean, I thought it was pink. I thought it was green. I thought it was this. Because a lot of people do announce different hues. 
I'm going to stick with the Pantone color of the year because they sort of are the leader of the color world and each year theirs seems to be a little stronger than others. And so I picked a container that was a very peri. It's that periwinkle hue. This one is a handmade pottery container. It's a vintage, it's bass pottery. Um, so no, you're not going to find this at the wholesale, but I just loved it and I thought it worked well with this organic swirling feel. It kind of looks like the very Perry picture that Pantone has published with the swirl of colors. I added an anchor pin and that way I can just take a bit of wet foam and set it in and then work with designing that, scoring down my corners. If you've had basic floral design, you know that scoring the corners is important. And so making sure I do that. I had a note come to me from one of our friends and he says, well, I'm glad you're shedding light on this color of the year because I heard it announced it was this vivid pink, which I did see that too. And then I just out of curiosity typed in on Google, color of the year, left out Pantone. Now Pantone came up first with their per very peri, but pink came up, a green came up, a misty gray came up and a blue came up and then sort of a brownish bricky color that was kind of interesting. They can't all be color of the year, but yes, they are all color of the year according to someone. Uh, and so I'm going to stick with this, but you'll want to kind of think about what works in your market. The oddity with Very Perry is that it's a brand new made up color. Pantone designed it specifically for this. It takes the combination of blue and red, giving you a bit of a violet hue, but they're calling it their own. They're very peri as opposed to violet. Um, last year they used yellow and green. They had two colors and they were saying it spoke to the worldwide isolation and uncertainty that came with COVID. And I'm thinking, well, aren't we still there? But this time they're saying they're taking blue because it represents constant and faithfulness and stability and merging it with red because it conveys energy and excitement to create a convergence that represents creativity and enthusiasm and wow hmm making up that i look at as okay we have blue and red oftentimes referred to as male and female colors giving us the mix so it could be he she they and it's the world coming together which i kind of like that the fact that it's blue red going into a convergence I like that. So while I get some flowers pulled out, Marisa, Parker, what's going on? Yeah, so before you start inserting some flowers in there, Pam would like to um, actually see if we can zoom in on that anchor pen. She really wants to see what that looks like up close. Yeah. We can do that. Master. Perfect. There we go. You got it? Yeah, great. Okay, uh, y'all got it? Okay, if you saw that and you liked it, we did that just for you because you asked the question. So now each and every one of you, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and give us a thumbs up, put your tulip in and share out this video because we want to let as many people as possible join us and know what the Floral Design Institute is doing and see the cool flowers from Floor Abundance because this is just the best. Can I, you, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Can you design directly into that anchor pin and not the foam? No. This particular anchor pin wouldn't give you the control that you need. If you were doing this without foam, if you wanted to do a foam-free design and follow the same type of thing, you would need a Kinzon. And you, this would hold a Kinzon really well, um, but that's what you would need to do is some form of frog or Kinzon. Um, that anchor pin really just anchors foam. I think you could use it to sort of secure some floral netting, but this is such a wide, shallow surface, I'm afraid that wouldn't work very well. So going with um, the foam in this container 
was the best option. Um, so just kind of thinking about what mechanics work with what container is kind of a big deal. Agapanthus, you may be familiar, ends up with these beautiful florets. It is very peri at its finest. Now very peri, it's interesting because when they announced it, I immediately went to my closet to figure out, oh my gosh, I have to have a very peri dress to wear when I do this. And I realized I really don't have anything purple. This is the only thing I have. It does have some very peri on it, but it's the only thing I own purple. I was just kind of shocked. So then I thought, well, okay, I'll wear this. It's got a little bit. And then I actually went and got very peri fingernails. This is probably the first and last time you'll see that, but, You've gotten a lot of but I did it. Yes. Yeah, very peri. This is for you because I'm not really a purple girl. So this year with purple though, I think Agapanthus is going to have its starring moment because it really truly reflects that very peri with a bit of a tint and then a darker shade and it's got that mutation of color that really gives you that red violet that they're talking about, that merger between blue and red. So in doing a design with these, I think about my scale. So go back to flower school basic floral design 101 right at the beginning when we talk about scale and proportion giving it a cut and then it's got such a big round stem I actually cut twice so that I've got almost a wedge because that will keep it from spinning then placing that down in then coming with a second bloom making sure it looks somewhat straight there and deciding which one I want I think I want this one and giving it a cut, and a second cut, and bringing it in, pulling the eye upward. Then if I've got two up here, thinking about sequencing, thinking about the Fibonacci sequence, so going forward to advanced floral design and the advanced study of scale, and that one, I want to take my largest bloom, I think I'll use this one, pull out the broken one, and then I'm going to go quite a bit shorter. Bring it down towards the front, I'm angling forward a bit. So it's kind of a modification even of your Ikebana lesson, although it's not Ikebana, that's not what I'm doing, but there's a little bit of that feel to it. You don't need that one. Then I can come in with additional blooms and cover up my mechanics, add in some foliage. One of the things that I love about Very Perry is it really looks fabulous with your grade foliages, eucalyptus, Dusty Miller. And so I think, again, eucalyptus is gonna have a point to shine, although it's been shining for a while now. Eucalyptus has been so on trend but it really goes along with this nicely. Mm -hmm. Giving it a cut. I have a quick question real quick. Sure. Uh, back on that anchor pin, can you use that in a more, in a more traditional container? Could you just use that the same way you use floral tape? Yes, you can. Um, anchor pins, we teach in, I want to say maybe the third week of classes when we really get into anchor pins as an alternative to foam. Especially, you know, I think of it at Mother's Day, how many zillions over the years of teacups have I done for Mother's Day arrangements? And there, the tape, you really don't want that to show in that little diminutive design, and it, it just looks tacky. So instead of tape, using an anchor pin and then a tiny bit of foam, works out perfectly. Sometimes if it's a larger arrangement, you may need to use two anchor pins to secure it. But yes, you can definitely use anchor pins in any type of design and they work out very well, very, very well. In a pinch, a substitute for an anchor pin is that little table thing that they put in a pizza box to keep the lid from pushing down on it. I'm like, oh my gosh. Not that I've ever ordered pizza, but... Um, <laughs> so you've heard. So I have heard. That is correct. Um, I could do darker green as well. I don't have to do all blue-green. Maybe bringing in a fatsia leaf on a horizontal. I'm going to shorten that down a bit. 
letting that come in there. And possibly a second one. So man, while you're placing that in, <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot of tulips over here on Facebook. We have John and Scott, Carl, Kim, Joanne, Evangeline, Roxy, Jim, Nicole, Gayla, Lacia, Sue, Robin, Drake, Jim, Carrie, David, Janet, Wayne, Debbie, Pam, Cherie, who noticed your nails. Roxy, Debbie, Gloria, who is watching us while she's doing one of her assignments. Gracie, Lisa, and Felicia. I love it. Welcome to all of you. I'm so glad you gave us some time today. This is my favorite day of the week because I get to spend time with the tulips. The scabiosa, isn't that a beautiful color? It really goes well with the peri, very peri, periwinkle. I can bring that in, giving myself a little bit of extension. And again, thinking about my sequencing. And I want a more open one. There we go. Adjusting. Oops, one down. There we go. Which one do I want? Maybe I'll do this one. Pulling it back a little further. So it draws your eye in towards the center of the design. So I'm just pulling your eye back, pulling your eye in, going down. So I've got multiple lines going on here to create the form of the design. So I've got lots of the elements and principles happening. Because elements and principles have to happen all the time. You can't just do them once in a while. Every single arrangement needs it. Now color, I'm focused on very peri, so it's monochromatic. It's really all one color, tints, tones, and shades of one color. Now you could mix this. Uh, in fact, Floor Abundance sent me so many amazing flowers. Wait till you see, it's like, oh my gosh. Uh, and they, sh they shipped things that will pair. So like adding in coral, adding in lemon yellow, adding in red, and you can get this full, wonderful spectrum of things that's just Amazing. It's a great flower friendly color. Orangium, taking it to that gray tone, gives great texture. Maybe bringing it down low. Leanne, uh, Norma would like to say to you uh, she owns a flower shop with her daughter and she owes, your, uh, owes you her paycheck. <laughs> because you taught her everything she knows. I love it. I'm honored to be part of your career journey. So thank you, Norma. You know, it's fun. Um, I kind of like social media as much as I hate social media because it's a connector. And that's why I like it. I, I hate it sometimes because it's a time sink. You can easily get going down a rabbit hole and all of a sudden you're going, what was I doing? I was supposed to be doing this and instead I'm doing this. But I just got a note from a graduate of mine from 1999 who just found us on social again and said she had done so well, opened her store, done all these things, and it just made me so happy to hear that. So I'm glad that I was part of your journey as well because it's what I enjoy doing. Now, since I have it in the front here, I want to pull it through to the back because you never want an arrangement that's flat. You don't want it to look like there's a wall build. You want to go through and pull all the way from front to back. So bringing it on around and adding in a bit of the orangium this direction, which just adds depth to the arrangement. So Leanne, um, kind of piggybacking off what Scott is um, saying, First, he's excited um, to have a, a very peri and hoping it's a great alternative for people who want only blue flowers because blue flowers are hard to find. And additionally, he's very excited to bring in these purples for Valentine's Day. So do you think adding these very peri colors to Valentine's Day, it would be a great way to express that, oh, this is Pantone color of the year as a selling point. Can I attach to that question a little bit? I had somebody ask the same just about what you thought of marketing and social in regard and displays in regards to the very theory. I think that 
Yeah. Very Perry is such a flower friendly hue and I really feel that for the vast majority of the public it's also a hue that they like and that it doesn't have a lot of negative connotations. Some people look at yellow and say, oh, I hate yellow, or they're like, red's too bold, or ooh, blue, there's no flowers that are blue. With the very peri, there are a lot of flowers, as you can see, and it gives you that freedom, since they made a manufactured color that has a variation to it, it gives you the freedom to use tints, tones, and shades. So yes, I would definitely show that and market it and use it as an education tool to your consumer. And then yes, I would incorporate it at Valentine's Day because it gives you greater flexibility with the supply chain issues that are coming up that if you're doing mix and match with reds and purples together, it's beautiful. It adds that touch of richness and again, you can use the Pantone color of the year as the reason for doing it. So I think it is a great marketing tool and I think it is going to be loved by consumers. Uh, so yes, I would definitely do that. I see no reason that I wouldn't. It, it's gonna be a good one. I have another great question here from Norma Leanne. Um, do you think because Valentine's Day is on Monday, do you think it's gonna be very busy? This is gonna be a tough Valentine's, I'll be honest. Um, and we'll be having more Valentine's lives, so I don't wanna to go too much into Valentine's Day, but I will speak to that. It's going to be a tough Valentine's because Mondays are traditionally a hard one. It's going to be easier in that we're still in the middle of a pandemic, and so a lot of people are choosing not to travel. Whereas in the past, if it was on a Monday, they would use the weekend to go somewhere, and then the Monday is oftentimes President's Day, so it's a three-day holiday, which again, so they go out of town, which then they don't need flowers. So um, with the pandemic, fewer people are traveling. Yes, more now than last year, but there's still fewer than there were. So I think that it won't be quite so bad. The other thing is that it's the day after the Super Bowl, which that could have some impact on it just because people's thoughts are tied up with Super, Super Bowl parties and such. And then all of a sudden they go, oh, it's Valentine's. So is it going to be more last minute because of that? And does Super Bowl mean more people stay home for Super Bowl parties? Don't know. And then you've got the issue of the supply chain and the increased shipping costs. So flowers are going to be more expensive. Uh, so I don't know that any of us can truly speculate where it's gonna go. My advice to you is to determine how much you can do so that you don't oversell and then be sure to price accordingly, knowing that things are going to be more expensive so that you don't end up losing money simply because you didn't charge enough. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed already flower prices have gone up and it's not going to stop. It's going to continue to go up. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting Valentine's. Um, so I'm going to stop on this one because I've spent about 20 minutes on it already, which is that's an eternity in the flower design world. But you can see the variations on very Perry, Agapanthus, Scabiosa, Oryngium, a little bit of Veronica, all of them from Floribundance. And I just think, I think it's gonna be a hit. What do you think? Do you think that people are gonna like it? I'm saying I think they are, but what do you think? Do you think it's a strong color of the year? Let's get some answers on that and then I'll grab some more flowers in another container. Well, I did okay. see, oh, I'm sorry. I did see a couple tulips out here. Um, Pam was one of them and I can't remember the other. However, um, purple or this more very peri is their brand color. Ooh. Oh, good, okay. So that works out nicely for you. So let's see, which one do I want to do? So many choices. Oh my gosh, there's so many great flowers here. That's the problem. I've got too many to choose from. I'm gonna to go to a purple vessel. This is definitely violet. It's not periwinkle. You can see from my fingernails, periwinkle has a little more blue in it, but the purple gives you a nice contrast for that. So I'm going to go ahead with that and I'm just gonna do fresh water in this one, no foam, because again, supply chain 
you may not be able to get a phone. I noticed that some places are struggling to keep it in stock and then you may have made the choice to go phone free and then of course you won't want to use phone. So what are your options? Fresh water, always use flower food. It'll keep your flowers alive so much better. Then tucking in flowers. And maybe I'll start with a little bit of the Dusty Miller. Dusty Miller is super thirsty, so I tend to use it in water instead of foam. I do use it in foam sometimes, I'll be honest, but it doesn't hold as well in foam. Now, some of you have probably had troubles with Dusty Miller at times. We all have at times. If you go to um, our Tulip Tuesday playlist, it's on YouTube, it's the Tulip Tuesday playlist. There's two, I think there's two videos about Dusty Miller giving you tips for, actually I think there are three Dusty Miller videos on there for tips of keeping it fresh and utilizing it in your design so that you don't have issues with it. Um, because it is actually a very wonderful long lasting flower or foliage, but it has issues. So kind of giving you some thoughts there but you'll find that on the playlist. Then, <clears throat> look at this. It's gilded plumosa. So it's plumosa that has been prepared and it came this way. Floor Abundance carries it. I believe they carry it in several different colors, but I kind of liked this coppery merged in with it. And see how it contrasts with the silver? Gives you another color and a little bit more texture. Let me get a cut. And this is gilded, it doesn't shed as badly. I mean, we've all seen Pumosa where it starts shedding and it makes you kind of cranky because it's like, oh my gosh, it's getting all over everything. This one doesn't do that so badly because the paint sort of holds everything in place. So, and no, I did not do it. It came this way. It was pre-gilded um, so that all I have to do is design with it, which is much easier. Leanne, um, Felicia has been finding that because she's in a beachy area, and I looked her up, she's in Florida, um, the peri very peri color has been very popular and going well there. That's our Felica that was in class. Oh! Yeah, okay. it's that one. And so, yes, when you get into the beach communities and the desert communities, that purple palette is so popular. Uh, and so we're just catching up with you here in the Pacific Northwest where, you know, we do plaid and green mm. and such. But no, that sounds stereotypical. But um, yeah, the beach communities and the desert communities have often embraced purples and blues. And so this palette is really perfect for them. And I bet you do get a lot of weddings in that color, Felica, definitely. So added a little bit of Ruscus. So what I'm doing is creating a base before I begin because I'm going to use some more fragile blossoms like Muscari. Muscari is one of my favorites and it truly is very peri periwinkle. Yeah, yeah. that plumosa reads like really drippy on camera. It's, really nice. it's almost like fairy taily or something. Really? Yeah. So it's a positive drippy? Yeah. Oh, really cool. Pretty. That makes me happy. Like magical kind of or yeah. something, you know? I planned it that way. Uh -huh. <laughs> Can I shove some tulips out over here? You may, while I sit and poke periwinkle. Yeah, okay. Well, I saw it's Kathy, Debbie with a Y, and Debbie with a uh, Anne, Christy, Taylor, Rosie, Sierra, Robin, Cindy, Trish, Larissa, Elaine, Tom, Leslie, Therese, and Tess, Christine, Jim, Heidi, Robin, Diane, Catherine, Melanie, and Lorna. And I had Lorna and Sierra here for their first time. Oh. Welcome, Lorna and Sierra and all of you. So you guys, we got a first timer or two out there. If you're a first timer, let us know. And for all of you tulips, please greet the first timers and make them feel special. You know, it's kind of scary to be a first timer and go, oh my gosh, these people all talk to each other and they all actually ask questions. What's going on? Should I keep my mouth shut? 
No, never keep your mouth shut. Let us know what you're thinking. That's what's most important about these collaborations is I learn from you, you learn from me, and we all are better. So it works out great. So, okay, I told you that there were gonna be a few surprises in the box because I didn't order specific flowers, okay? When I work with Floor Abundance, instead, I give them a price and a color palette. And so I called them and I said, hey, Debbie, I always work with Debbie, Jenna, and Yoast. And so I called them, I said, I'm gonna send you an order. And then I email them a list and then I always add a color. So this time I made a copy of the Pantone color and I stuck it on there. I said, I wanna do old, very Perry, and don't spend more than this and send me treasures. And that works so well. And that's what they call just their creative pool. So if you wanna try that flexibility, because sometimes, especially now, you don't know what you can get. And so by saying, this is what I want to spend, this is my color harmony, and I hate blah, 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 then they go through their coolers and pick the best. And so I never know exactly what I'm gonna get. I expected that I would get some Delphinium and Lysianthus, but, they also sent me these sweet peas. Oh. Oh, are those just the greatest? Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. And I wouldn't have thought about that because it's a little early, but this was one that they sent me that was kind of a surprise that I was so excited. They're forget-me-nots. And here in the Pacific Northwest, our forget-me-nots are bluer, but these have that lavender tinge to them. They're so beautiful. And you can see when I put it in with the other flowers, how great. So just removing the side foliage, giving it a cut and letting it nestle down into the water. The head's coming up. Man, I just want to let the new timer, or the, um, the new timers that are on YouTube they are getting, a, they can't see over here on Facebook, but uh, all of the tulips over here on Facebook are welcoming, welcoming them in. Oh, good. You know, we're all one big happy family. So thank you, tulips. I really appreciate that. It just, you know, when I see people in the tulip group on Facebook posting a question about, does anybody know blah, 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 blah. And then everybody chimes in, okay, well, this is what you do, or this is how it works, or this is what I have found. And we all learn and we all get better because of that. Then, oh my gosh, this was the other one that was a surprise that I was so excited. Look at these pansies. Are those just the greatest? They are so beautiful. And I can tell you, because I've used them before, they actually hold up surprisingly well. The problem is finding someone that grows them with the longer stem like this, because you've seen them out in the garden with those little tiny short stems, but you need a little longer stem for a, the ability to design. And I've got to find the perfect little hole here for it, I'm running into other stems, because they're a little fragile, so you can't just push. You have to find the right spot for it to fit, there we go, to find its home, and then nestle it so that the foliage holds its head upright because they have that little bit of bend, so you need to work with it and nestle them in so that they show beautifully. You know what this looks like to me now? It looks like a violet plant. Oh. Yes, yeah, sort of does, you, you are know? correct. And then I even use the buds just because I think they're kind of cute, you know? I paid for them. I may as well use them. Leanne, we have a new timer over here on Facebook. We have Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Welcome. I'm glad you're a first timer and that you found us. We love to have everybody join. If, basically, if you're a flower lover, we want you to be part of us. And today we're talking very Perry, the Pantone color of the year and all the different flowers that are very peri friendly. That sweet pea, oh my gosh, I think that just needs to go down here in the center to carry the color on up above the pansies. Again, finding my little hole. Leanne, I have a tulip question. Okay. A, a, a flower tulip question. <laughs> um, okay, so this comes from Jennifer. 
How do we elongate tulips to get the longer stems? She loves them, but they're not long enough for her to design Ichabod a style. Do you have any tips or secrets? That's so true, because most tulips come to you at about, what, 12 to 15 inches? Now you can get a French tulip that is going to be 30 inches, 25 inches, something. You know, so French tulips can be quite large, but the pricing is in also quite different. Uh, and they're not always available. Right now you're getting the regular tulips, which are short. The only way that I would say you could increase that size is to add a vessel of some sort. Uh, I know when we do the large scale instruction, we talk about extenders and such. You putting it in a water tube isn't gonna be enough. It won't hold enough water to hold it. It would just hold it for a few hours and then it would drink too much. Um, but using an extender would really be your only option. Uh, and that's kind of the sad fact is that tulips are shorter. So you may do tulips down low and then other things taller to make your arrangement large. Uh, the other problem is gonna be that your tulips grow. I know Parker's gonna need to take a picture uh, later today of the tulips from last week and then we're going to put them side by side so you can see how they were when they began and how they were as they grew and it looks like two different arrangements it's kind of fun how that works so yeah so I'm going to stop there so you can see the little tiny bouquet that is all very peri but the variations those cool pansies Sweet Peas, Forget-Me-Nots, Muscari, Plumosa, Dusty Miller, all of it from Floor Abundance, very, very grand, okay? Man, what did you mean by an extender? Did you elaborate on that? An extender would be, um, when we teach, we teach several different things. One would be to use like a funeral cone because it's a cylinder, it's a, it's a conical metal container or plastic container with a stick on the bottom and then you can extend the stick down into the arrangement. You design your tulips into the cone and then extend it out. Um, there are larger tubes that you can do and then extend that out. So it's just anything to add an extra stem to something. It doesn't necessarily have to be a tulip. It can be anything. And then I thought I would grab this vessel, which is not very peri. It's more leaning to that bluey aqua, but it plays well with very peri. And then I grabbed the antique hydrangea, which has so much of that blue, red, violet. So it really shows that convergence. Now it's kind of interesting when you read the story that goes with the Pantone color of the year and they talk about the convergence of the red and the blue and the merger and all of that. They also are talking about the convergence of the virtual world with the real world. And that kind of spoke to me, especially today as I had just seen where Jim and uh, Amanda, <laughs> I had to stop and think about that, um, had connected from the virtual world to the real world. And to me, that makes life really special because you can connect even when you're not together and have a relationship and build a friendship. And then when you can get together, you can connect in that real world as well. And I thought, huh, how funny that that's happening right here as we're talking about the Pantone color of the year with the merger of the virtual world and the real world. And it works out so well. And we've got students in class right now that have been with us in the virtual world for several things. And now they're here in the real world to get their certification. Uh, and then coming up at the end of the month, that first week of February, so it's January 31st to February 4th, something like that, that week, we've got um, more people coming that have been with us, some doing their basic floral design studies online, and then coming to join us 
in the classroom for their advanced studies. I know Wayne's coming. I think you said Wayne was with us on the live today, and I know he's coming. He's been waiting. He got sideway, you know, sidelined by uh, all the COVID, but now he's finally vaccinated and boosted and ready to go, and he's coming to join us for his advanced studies. And, you know, it's funny because we met virtually the first time and then met in the real world. He and Wayne came and visited and we spent time together in the real world and then he went back and then he was with us in the virtual world again and now he's going to be back in our real world. So a definite example of the convergence of virtual and real and Pantone with the red and blue kind of fun I I like this year's color what was the consensus out there from our people do they like the color or is it one they're embracing oh yeah, yeah they definitely. love it yeah I like this one too it's my favorite. and you know what Leanne speaking of Wayne he has a question <laughs> do you know if Design Master has a paint that's similar to Very Fairy they do. They have actually several different versions of lavender, um, and they have a periwinkle, which would be very close to this. And then depending on your interpretation of very peri, you might want to mix and match some of the paints to get exactly your hue, because you can adjust it based on what you want. Now, I don't know, Parker, I forgot to tell you I was doing this tall vase. Are we even on camera? Yeah, it's cropping off a little bit. Maybe, should I move it back yeah, here? Yeah, move it back. Oh, that'd be nice, yeah. Okay. Sure. Just dawned on me, I usually warn people if I'm going to do something tall because we have to reset the studio a little bit, but I didn't, and so my apologies. So now I'll just move it back here and work from here so that you can see. So I've got the antique hydrangea, then the delphinium, and you can see the lisianthus. So this is a great example of how you can adjust that very peri palette to fit the colors that are available in the flowers at the moment and how well they all blend together. So if you have a client that is wanting this color, the color of my nails, you can just show them how it blends so well with this and this and this and looks beautiful whichever way. And Leanne, let's do a shout out to Casey, who is also going to be joining us for the advanced class. Ah, oh, hi Casey. I can't wait to see you here. It's going to be a great class. That one, um, you know, I think we're all just so ready to get back together and to be doing things in real life that we're all just bouncing up and down with excitement. And... Uh, that time of year here in Portland, that last week of January, first week of February, is actually starting to be spring. And within walking distance of the classroom, we've got um, camellias in full bloom. We'll have uh, probably snowdrops blooming by then. Some daffodils might in the more protected areas. It's a little bit early for them, but there should be some. Uh, in fact, oh my gosh, I have to tell the students this. There is a camellia tree that is just down the road on 21st and Overton. It's the biggest camellia tree I have ever seen, and it is covered, absolutely loaded with the most glorious blooms. I just was out for a walk last night, I think it was, and there it was, and it was spectacular. Oh my gosh, I, my heart was just beating because I was so excited about it. But um, when you guys come, you'll notice that spring has sprung and it just makes it kind of fun to be in Portland. Allium, another one that's kind of perfect with the very peri palette. So Leanne, Rosie <clears throat> has a wonderful comment here. They say this live is a long-standing convergence. They watch and learn in Australia, have tulip friends all over the world, and off they go to create in the real world. It's the FDI business model. That's so true. 
Yes, I love it. And, you know, I find it amazing that it is including people from all over the world because I think about the time differences, and I know some of you are watching me while you lie in bed late at night. Others are watching me while you eat dinner or while you make dinner. Others are still at work. It's just kind of like, and some it's very, very early in the morning. You're having breakfast. Leanne, um, Jennifer wants to know if those elms smell like onions. No, this one is not. I'm gonna cut it, cut it and smell. Smell your fresh cut. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the bottom smells like onion. This does not. So we'll make sure to put the bottom in water and hide it. I love this comment from Arrow. Finally, a color theme with an abundance of floral specimens to choose for, for the designs. You know, that's exactly what I thought when I saw the announcement was like, how lucky are we? I can't get these to line up straight. They're making me kind of cranky. So we may have to work on that off camera to get it lined up well for the photography because my stems are not behaving. I know that you probably have never had that happen where they just misbehave, but mine are definitely <clears throat> misbehaving today and they don't want to go where I'm telling them to go. It's like bad flower, bad flower. But you know what? That's life. Anyway, so I've got Bella, or Delphinium, Allium, Lysianthus, Hydrangea, all of these just work so well with the very peri color palette. I could always go back and add in even a little bit redder hue. Look what happens when I do that. Ooh. Do you like that? Yeah. It really changes it, doesn't it? Now this one has such a fat stem and I've got so much in there, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, so let's see if any of them are thinner. These are just so strong and healthy. I know, I'm complaining because they're too strong and healthy. Bad. Oh my gosh, I should not complain about strong and healthy flowers. But that's what my problem is. They're too strong and healthy, so the stem is large. Leanne, we have a couple people, yes, watching you while they're laying in bed. However, Rick is watching, taking a bow bath. <laughs> I'm taking a bath with Rick. <laughs> a bubble. Don't forget the bubbles. Oh my gosh, Rick, you, oh my gosh, now that's a visual. Um, <laughs> I love it. Who was it was telling me that they always take a bubble bath, and I just thought, really? Who has to wash your tub? I don't allow baths at my house because I don't want to wash the tub. So the minute I go to a hotel, the first thing I do is I get in the bathtub because then somebody else has to wash it. But it's like, oh, I just don't want to have to do that. Leanne, the Floor Abundance, do they only sell the businesses or can you just, as a customer, buy from them? Floor Abundance is strictly to people with a business license. But if you go online and apply, as long as you have a business name, go ahead and put that business name in there and then you should qualify. But you've got to have a business name so that you can qualify to be a business purchaser. They do have a sister company that sells to the public called Fabulous Florals. It's the same flowers, it's the same people, but you pay a retail price because it's for the retail consumer. Um, but Floor Abundance is for the wholesale customer. So if you don't have a business name, they're not going to uh, welcome you. Well, they'll welcome you, but they'll tell you no. So, um, so you can see adding that red. Oh, doesn't that just make it so pretty? And then I could always extend it further by taking a little bit of eucalyptus because it has a nice skinny stem that's very, very strong. So I could add this in to get a little more movement outward. Adding visual value because the scale increases. I 
designing. I'm not used to designing from this side. I'm always used to having it in front so I can face you and talk to you. And I'm not sure I like it. I prefer to design from the other side where I can see you. Well, I guess I can't really see you, but I pretend I'm seeing you. And I visualize you, trying not to visualize you in a bathtub, but um, I do try to think about the fact that I'm talking to you. And so it's kind of hard for me to design this direction. So my apologies. But you can sort of see where I'm headed with that. So I'm going to stop on that one because I'm tired of designing backwards. I can't, I can't do that anymore. I have to be able to look at you and talk to you. So we'll set this one aside. Now tomorrow, we'll be taking pictures and we'll get them all posted on social media for you so that you can see close up what we created and how we created and I thought for my last one it would be kind of fun to do a head vase because they're so on trend and it's kind of like flowers on the brain and that's kind of the way I feel is that I have flowers on the brain and I knew this time of year I really think flowers because they give me happiness when it's cold and wet and gray it's like okay there's hope the world will come back, spring will return, and it just makes me kind of feel like, okay, keep flowers on the brain and you'll feel a little better and everything falls into place and it just makes you, makes you happy. I always say we practice with flower sunshine and so we fill our lives with flower sunshine, it just makes everything better. So other questions, what else is going on out there? Where can we get this head vase from? <laughs> ah. We should just become vase dealers, I think. I know, let's just see. This one came from our local wholesale house. Putting my glasses on to see if I can see anything. It is Napco Imports. N is a Nancy, A-P-C-O, Napco Imports. So now you know where you can get it. You know the answer to that one. And we got it from the local wholesaler here in town, Linda Joy Bill. Um, oftentimes I'll just call and say, I need some new vases. I'm just bored. Can you just send me some new vases? And I say, I need five vases or I need 10 vases. And, and I let her pick because sometimes if I keep picking, I just always pick the same thing. You know, they all start looking the same. And so it's better to have somebody else choose so that it forces you to use something different. And this is one of the ones that she chose for me. And I'm very happy with it. Leanne, can I ask you a question in regards to the right you just made, the big tall one? Um, Bega, uh, Berga, excuse me, would like to know um, when designing a vase like that, how would a customer take that home from the shop? Because they usually do just bouquets, uh, hand ties in a vase. That particular one is so tall that it is tricky because even some cars, it's not going to have enough ceiling room. So it would end up maybe being behind the front seat. So if I was transporting that particular container, I would use a 12 by 12 box. So the box is far bigger than what I really need. I would take a 12 by 12 box, then I would set the vessel in that, and then I would tape it using a tape grid so it's kind of in the center of the box because that way the footprint is larger, which will help it from going back and forth. And then I would take the passenger seat of the front and pull it forward. I'd set it in the back, right behind the passenger seat on the floor, and then I would scoot the passenger seat back until it ran into the box, because then it would hold the box in place, and the top, or the tape would hold the vase within the box, and that would work at a consumer level. If I was delivering it my own self to a customer, then I would use a crate, you know, like the plastic milk crates, that type of crate, and I would set it in the, in the crate and I would use bungee cords to hook it to the crate. And that way the crate holds it with a good fit print. The bungee cords hold the vase in place. And if you're delivering it, chances are you have a higher vehicle. So then you could just slide it into the back of your vehicle. So 
those are my my techniques. Um, I know there are delivery systems that you can buy, and so you might use that. So other ideas from tulips. How do you deliver your tall vessels? Because that is a tricky thing when you've got a customer that you're trying to get it to, or they're trying to transport it themselves. That can be kind of tricky. I have an idea. What's your idea? It's similar to yours, what we used to do. Um, we would have just the, those really tall buckets, really tall ones, and then we'd put the arrangement into the bucket and sometimes would use a bungee cord to go around the seat and around the arrangement inside the bucket mm. to hold the arrangement in place. That's great, yeah. So there's another technique is using the bucket. The key to a lot of it is those bungee cords. <laughs> it's like, how funny is that? Um, but if you're doing it to hand it to the customer to put in their own vehicle, the bungee cord and thing doesn't work quite as well. Parker. Would you do another one of those aspidistra little knots and I can do a little close-up on it? Sure. Okay. Tell me, am I positioned correctly? Perfect. You're in the perfect spot. Okay. Notice the lovely periwinkle nails for very peri. <laughs> and, you know, I've got perfect. So then I just take it and I'm just tying it like I'm tying a knot. I just pull it back on itself, and I've got just a knot, okay? So there's probably fancier ways to do it, but I just wanted some little knots to stick in there so that it was a little bit interesting, and I didn't feel like this particular vase wanted a big old leaf coming out. You know, that just didn't seem like appropriate, so I thought little knots. It looks like she has curls in her hair. Or they have curls in their hair. Oh, that's, that's exactly what I intended, yes. Okay, what else am I going to stick in here? We've got so many grand things. Oh, I haven't used any of the stock yet. Mm. Stock is back in style. And one thing that I found is Floor Abundance has stock in so many cool flower colors. So like this one in the pinker lavender, which works well with the very peri, and then it comes in a soft bluer lavender, and then it also comes in a really deep, intense shade of purple, and then peach and pink and white and yellow. I mean, it comes in so many colors. It's just a great item, and that fragrance is pretty wonderful. So I do take most of the foliage off. I don't feel like it enhances the bloom and it can actually take some of the moisture from the flower so that instead of putting it to the blooms, it's putting it to the foliage. So I tend to remove that foliage so that I get more of the energy going to the bloom. And then let's see, maybe some of the sweet peas. They have such beautiful draping. So Leanne, um, I know you mentioned this earlier about your um, coffee cup that you mm -hmm. bought from one of our students. However, Scott just really wants to make sure that your other cup isn't broken, it's just dirty because it's like another FDIT member. Do you want me to go get it? <laughs> no, so it's, it's <laughs> in here because I sucked down a cup before oh, we even started. <laughs> there it is and it's got coffee in it because I sucked down a cup before I got on live because I was today's been a busy day and I was like okay you need more caffeine lady so I did two um, cups of coffee one that I put on while you were here and one that I started before so nope it's still alive and well we've got it it's not broken and gone this was just um, a beautiful gift from Chesley. So she flew in from, well actually she drove in from San Francisco. And so she brought me a San Francisco mug and she'll be here. I think she's staying through advance too. So those of you that are coming and joining us that last day of January and the first week of February, you can meet Chesley who gave me the cup. So that'll be fun. Let's see, what other things? Oh, I haven't used these yet. Now this takes the very peri, and I don't know if you can see it on camera, we'll hope. You might need to do a close-up of this, Parker, but 
The anemone oh, yeah. is that really intense, vibrant shade of purple, but notice the very peri center. It almost matches my fingernails. It's just Ooh. like the perfect color. I mean, those are so grand. So we'll add that in here. That was another one of the surprises that I got in the box that I was so excited about because it's just a perfect color. And their blooms are so large. It's just like, oh my goodness. Leanne, before we go, can we do a shout out to Amanda's mom, please? She is she feeling better, Amanda? I've been so worried about her. Let's well, she she's tuning in from the room, so I just wanted to make sure we just say hello to mom and Amanda. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Mom. I'm glad you're together, and I hope you're feeling better. You know, illness is just not a good friend, and these days, everybody's getting sick, it seems like. So please, tulips, take care. Take care of yourself. Drink lots of fluids. Wear your mask. Get vaccinated. All that stuff. Um, because we want to keep tulips well. So, hi, Mom. I'm glad you're joining us. I'm going to finish this one off camera because we're running out of time, but I just wanted to make sure and show you that last bloom because it's so exquisite. It just, mm, it just is grand. But thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed the video, this hour of collaboration, be sure to put it in your calendar for next week. Next week, teacher Marisa is going to be here with her animal menagerie. It's going to be a grand, fun, whimsical day of flower critters. So um, you don't want to miss out on that. It's going to be a ton of fun. And then for now, please share this out. Give us a thumbs up. Add a last comment to Amanda's mom so that she knows you're thinking about her. Say a little prayer for health for all the tulips. And I'll see you all next week from off camera because Marisa will be on camera. And we only allow one mask free at a time because we practice COVID safety around here. So I'm putting my mask on, moving to the other side, and I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.